Hello, fellow humans. I'm Bruce, your Texas independent real estate broker. Welcome to Lone Star Land. Whether you're moving to a new town in Texas, from across the state, or out of state, it can be both exciting and overwhelming. Today, we're going to help you with our services series and help you navigate the services and resources that you'll need to settle in smoothly. Let's go. We're taking a look at our services series regarding you know the different utilities and services that you will need when you're moving to texas or if you're just moving across town or across the state this portion is regarding water and waste and those basic public utilities there so today we're going to cover a little bit of that and we'll also get into some of the rural aspects such as municipal utility districts muds pids buds you know, public works, public utilities, and things like that. So for water, sewer, and trash, you'll generally want to contact your city's public works or the basic utility department. And in rural areas, these services might be managed by a municipal utility district or a PID or PUD. So we'll get into that right now. And here we go. Let's start with the basics. When you move to a new town, you'll need to know who to contact for utilities, services, licensing, and more. Here's a breakdown of who does what and where to find them. For water, sewer, and trash, you'll want to contact your city's public works utilities department. In rural areas, the services may be managed by a municipal utility district or a private company. So let's take a look at a few of these options. So if you just go to a internet search and search in the city you're going to, we'll start with Plano here, city of Plano, you can take water or utilities, either one, and it will take you to their website and you can click on there and it'll take you right in to the options you need. Most cities you can set up service, start and stop service on this one, different information, trash, recycling. Also with your trash out in the country, there are often a variety of private companies that will help you with that. And I pay more than I need to for that, but you know, I don't recall what it was in the town, but out here, it's about $40 a month, and I don't use that much trash, so I'm probably going to be looking into some other options here soon regarding that. All right, so that's what we have for water. Just go to an internet search and pull up your county, your city, and whatever that service is, and then go from there. And it'll just give you more information. So that's what you've got there. And next, you know, for example, we'll take a look at another town, like a little long view. I typed in the same city of Longview water utilities was my search criteria there and that pulls up utility billing services utilities accounts can take you straight to their website which is going to be this site here chapter 49 of the Texas water code says if a person is selling a property that's in a district created under the Texas water code or by an act of the legislature to provide certain utilities such as water, sanitary sewer, drainage, flood control, any of those services or facilities have been financed with bonds that are payable by the persons who live in the district, then the seller must give notice to the buyer of those potential fees for owning the property. Taxes. Furthermore, the law says the notice must be given to the buyer prior to entering into a contract or as an addendum to the contract at the time the contract is negotiated. If the notice is not timely provided, the buyer can terminate the contract at any time. So you definitely want to be aware of that if you're selling a home, as well as if you're buying a home in an area that has a mud or pit. The main takeaway is there is no binding contract if such notice is not acknowledged by the buyer at or prior to executing the contract. Giving notice after the contract is executed does not eliminate the buyer's right to terminate the contract any time prior to closing. Real estate professionals often ask about the difference between MUDs, PIDs, TIFs, HUDs. The most notable difference between the different types of districts are the projects they fund and how they are financed. So let's start with MUDs. Municipal utility districts finance the construction of public infrastructure that does not yet exist, typically utility facilities, roadways. Over time, developers within a MUD can be reimbursed for water, sewer drainage, and sometimes even road infrastructure through property taxes. The purpose of a MUD is to provide a developer an alternative way to finance infrastructure. Homeowners in a MUD might receive a monthly bill 
from the mud for water and sewer usage, as well as an annual tax bill. This mud tax will be in lieu of a city tax. Mud taxes are deductible property tax. The MUD is a political entity that can levy taxes overseen by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Fun fact, there are over 900 MUDs in Texas. Approximately 65% of those are in the Houston area. So again, MUD stands for Municipal Utility District. It's a subdivision of the state of Texas that's created to build infrastructure, provide sewer services, such as water, sewer, and stormwater drainage, in areas where a city cannot provide them. A MUD might be created for a brand new community that sits just outside a public water area. MUDs are funded through bonds or investments made by the state of Texas and paid to the MUD to create the necessary infrastructure to provide the water and sewer services to the residents. Those bonds are paid off as the MUD collects taxes from the residents of the community. That's known as a MUD tax and is part of the homeowner's property taxes. So how much is a mud tax? Well, the mud tax can be up to $1.40 of total property taxes per $100 of assessed value. So, and, and they're going to typically range from 2.1 to 3.6 um, per every 100. So let's say for a $300,000 home, the mud tax could be as much as $4,200 per year. That's typically paid through escrow. So homeowners don't worry about sending payments directly to the city. Mud taxes also are going to be higher in a brand new development because new infrastructure must be built. Then over time, as the bonds are paid off, the mud tax generally decreases. After 20 to 30 years, the mud tax may be totally eliminated. So who oversees and operates the mud? Well, a mud is governed by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, TCEQ. It makes sure all activities, services, and infrastructure are in line with local and state regulations. The MUD is operated by a board made up of five members. Initially, the members are appointed by the TCEQ. Then, as the community grows, residents can run for the board. Property owners within the MUD communities have voting power and can elect board members for the four-year terms. Every MUD must also have consultants such as an engineer, attorney, financial advisor, and an operator. So... Again, a MUD is a district created under the Texas Water Code or by an act of the legislature to provide certain utilities, water, sanitary sewer, drainage, flood control, any of those services or facilities to be financed with bonds that are payable by the persons who live in the district. Chapter 49 of the Texas Water Code requires a person selling the property in the MUD to give notice to the buyer or of those potential fees for owning the property. That same law states that the notice must be given to the buyer prior to the buyer entering into the contract or as an addendum to the contract at the time the contract is negotiated. If the notice is not timely provided, the buyer can terminate the contract at any time. MUDs are often collected through the homeowner's property tax bill. So now let's talk about a PUD. A PUD is created by the community and generally operates under a board, similar to how a homeowner's association works. The PUD is created for the sole purpose of providing electricity, water, sewer, and telecommunications to a subdivision. So sometimes the acronyms for PIDs and PUDs are used interchangeably. They're not really the same thing. A PID is an entity created by the city or county. A PUD, Public Utility District, is created by the community and operated under an elected board, which may seem similar to an HOA. However, it exists solely to provide electricity, water, sewer, and telecom telecommunications. Although PUDs are controlled by the homeowners, they operate independently from the HOA. So the public utility district, it's a community created district providing electricity, water, sewer, telecommunications. They're controlled by homeowners, operate independently from a homeowner's HOA. So let's get into the third one, which is a PID, Public Improvement District. It's a special district that funds infrastructure improvements for a subdivision. They can be used for water, sewer, landscaping, parks, other improvements. They're funded by bonds, secured by liens against the properties, and they're assessed, and those assessments are paid back over a set number of years. PID fees are also tax deductible. PIDs, again, public improvement districts. They can be used for the same purpose as a MUD, water, sewage, and infrastructure. However, PIDs can also be used for sidewalks, roadways, landscaping, parks, and recreation, public safety, security, parking facilities, even affordable housing in some areas. 
PIDs are utilized to make these improvements authorized by Chapter 372 of the Local Government Code. Unlike a MUD, a PID is not a political entity. Some developments, oh, some developments use a PID instead of an HOA, since PID assessments are tax deductible. Unlike tax rates for MUDs, these assessments are fixed once the bonds are sold. PIDs are often funded, typically funded, through bonds secured by liens against the property. That's each individual home. Bonds are issued based on the property's appraised value. Once issued, those bonds are paid back through the collection of special assessment taxes. This assessment is an addition to the property taxes. These special assessment taxes are only levied for a set number of years established by the PIDs service plan, which is a minimum of five years. It's important to note that a public hearing must be held before an, a PID can issue bonds. So what is the PID tax? Well, the PID, Property Improvement District, is that special district created by the city or county allowing it to charge an assessment to properties within a certain area, like a new neighborhood, in order to build out additional infrastructure. MUDs typically focus on water services. The PID tax generally additionally pays for enhanced landscapes, open spaces, lakes, fountains, city parks, shade structures, and various recreational and pedestrian improvements, flat work, sidewalks, trails, things like that. So PID taxes end when the levied tax against a property like a house or a home is paid in full. PID taxes may be spread out over 20 to 40 years, or they may be paid in full and up front by the homeowner. So while mud and PID taxes may feel like a headache to pay every month, then taxation is theft, and that's a whole different topic. You know, their claim is that every time you drive on the road, go to a beautiful park with your kids, watch the rain water drain away from your property, then you know that your mud and pit taxes are working for you. Well, there are things that we can do in a civilized society that don't involve taxation and um, all of that. And we don't really need government services to rely on. You know, there are benevolent entities and people just working together to, that can take care of these things. But again, that's a different topic. Maybe we'll make a little video one of these days on taxation and theft and all of that. We also have what is called a TIF or TIF, the Tax Increment Financing. It's a public financing method used to subsidize community improvements such as new public utility facilities and area improvements. TIF is authorized at the state level and administered by local governments. It's intended for local government to designate areas or redevelopment to certain areas to encourage economic development to create jobs to increase the tax base. Both TIFs and PIDs are components of a city and governed by the city council. There we have it. Yeah, we've covered the TIFs, PIDs, PUDs, MUDs, and all of that. And so when you're looking into this, you know, keep in mind that you know, when you're buying or selling a home as the seller, you definitely want to provide all of the important required documentation to one, because it's the right thing to do just to disclose, disclose, disclose. And also if you don't, in many cases such as this, you, the potential buyer has an out. They can just walk away out of the contract. If you haven't provided them all of the documents that are required to make that contract valid in Texas. And some of that information is inf available on the TREC that's Trek Texas real estate commission website. Okay. And we'll probably link that down below in some of these messages. So also regarding the state, so house bill 1543 in the seller's notice that includes public improvement districts. So that bill revised the language of the statutorily mandatory notice used in the real estate transaction related to properties located in a PID public improvement district. It requires the notice to be given to a prospective purchaser before executing the contract separately as an addendum or as a paragraph of the purchase contract. If the transaction is entered without the notice being provided, the bill authorizes the purchaser buyer to terminate the contract unless the seller provides the notice at or before closing and the purchaser elects to close. The bill requires the purchaser to sign the notice and the notice must be recorded once signed. If it's not signed and recorded, it didn't happen. The bill has an effective date of September 1st, 2021. So just a few years ago at the time of this recording, and the TREC, Texas Real Estate Commission Broker Lawyer Committee met in June to discuss, uh, to discuss 
the best way to implement the new requirements and decided to recommend the use of the promulgated addendum to the contract that mirrors the statutory notice. That draft addendum and corresponding contract form changes were approved after being presented to the commission at the August 2021 meeting. So remember that um, as a seller, you're required to furnish that. Even if you're doing for sale by owner, you're still required to furnish those notices. If you're a broker or realtor or real estate agent, then it's your professional obligation to provide that information to your seller and to your buyer if you're representing the buyer to make sure that all of this is in order and streamlined so that you don't have any hiccups or questions or problems and conflicts later on in the process. You want everybody to understand exactly what they're getting into and um, disclosure, 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 right? And so that's what we have on MUDs, PIDs, PUDs, and TIFFs. So thanks for joining us. I hope this guide helps you get settled into your new Texas home. If you have any questions, need further assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out. Welcome to Texas or welcome back to Texas. And remember, I'm here to help make your move as smooth as possible. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Lone Star Land for more tips and local insights.